All right, let's talk about some of the audiovisual technology basics that you need to know as a church media manager. Starting with audio. Audio is king. You'll hear that probably saying from time to time. There's no amount of great video that will save your live streams and recordings if your audio is not in place. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more in a secondary chapter here about tuning your audiovisual system. So that means tuning your camera's color correction, tuning the audio mixer. Right now, we're just going to talk about basics of audio and video. So first of all, three of the connectors up here that you're going to see quite a lot of XLR cables, which have a male and a female. You're going to see quarter inch cables. A lot of times these are referred to as guitar cables. And you're going to see the classic 3.5 millimeter cable. That is the one that plugs into a smartphone or iPod and pumps the music into your, your either digital audio mixer or your analog audio mixer. So those are the three audio cables that you're going to see quite a lot of. Uh, these audio cables can, uh, can be connected to your audio mixers. Your audio mixer might have an input. It might have an output. Um, and you might have a mono output. We talked a little bit about mono, meaning that both left and right audio channels are paired into a single cable, or you might have these cables using stereo channels, meaning that there is a left and right channel separated and you need to use two cables together to connect them to your USB audio mixer that we talked about or audio interface. And uh, then we'll talk about those, uh, those video cables in just a minute. But I want to talk about digital audio and I want to talk about the cable types. So on the video side of things, we have Ethernet, HDMI, and we have SDI. And Ethernet is really becoming one of the popular favorites because you can power devices using that cabling. You can uh, run it hundreds of feet, and we'll talk about the limitations. And you can actually send data and control a camera or control a device remotely using an Ethernet cable. Um, HDMI cable is strictly used for video, usually short runs. And then SDI cable is strictly for video, but it is can be run a lot longer. So let's look at those distances. Cat5e is where we're starting. Anything below Cat5e, meaning Cat3, Cat4, even Cat5, don't be fooled, Cat5e is where we want to start because it supports a gigabit of bandwidth. And the reason why is because if we're putting in anything new into the church, we want it to be able to support the latest IP protocols, which at a minimum are going to require a gigabit of bandwidth connectivity. Now, Cat5e can go 100 meters, which is 328 feet. Cat6 is just a higher quality cable. Um, you might be, someone might recommend that to you. Uh, it has just higher quality connectors and shielding. Cat6a makes a major jump to 10 gigabits per second. And we'll talk about the gigabits per second later in the IP networking chapter, but um, it is important and it could become a bottleneck on your network. So we'll talk a little bit about it. Now, HDMI 1.4 and 2.0 can do 10 to 18 gigabits per second. That means we can do like uncompressed 4K video um, at up to 50 feet. Now, SDI, which has the, the three main ones here, SDI, HDI, and 3G SDI, can and a regular SDI can do 1,000 um, feet. HD SDI can do 300 feet. And 3G SDI can do 200 feet. 3G SDI can do 1080p 60 frames per second. HD SDI can do 1080p at 30 frames per second. When you double your frames per second, you double the bandwidth. And that's something that generally I don't suggest churches use 60 frames per second. There's really no need for it. It's not a sports game. Um, there's, there's movement, but there's not that much movement. Now, on the audio side, so many churches have started to use what are called digital audio workstations. And Ableton seems to be the one that most churches are gravitating towards. And I want to explain why, because I really think that it could uh, influence the way that you build and design your audiovisual system. So Ableton Live is a digital audio workstation. And what it can do is it can kind of be the backbone of your band. So it could have a click track for each one of your members. And what that allows them to do is to have a in-ear monitor that allows them to keep the click of the tempo so everyone's on the right tempo. You can play backing tracks with worship music produ uh, production companies like Loop Community and Multitracks.com. You can actually tie it into ProPresenter and Easy Worship or ProClaim. And you can actually have the lyrics triggered by where you are in the song specifically. 
Um, you can actually automate the church lighting, and now you can even control the PTZ Optics cameras. Here's a look at Ableton, and if you've never seen this before, there's other ones out there like Logic, Pro Tools, the list goes on and on. But essentially, it looks like this. There are a lot of MIDI tracks, and there's instruments, and there's tracks that can be triggered. You can say, all right, play this song. Let's call it Amazing Grace. And everyone in the band, here's the backing tracks. You can even say stuff like verse in three, two, one, and then literally help, help the, the band play. Here's Pro Presenter, and Pro Presenter can be used to organize the song lyrics, and you can actually send MIDI commands from Ableton directly to Pro Presenter, which might actually be outputting onto OBS, Wirecast, etc. I know it's advanced. We actually, I'm going to include a video on this with an interview with Doug Lawls from the Keys Vineyard Church that really taught me about a lot of it. And I think you guys will be interested in seeing that if you want to use Ableton. Now on the live streaming hardware side, obviously we're going to be come in contact with microphones. There's headset microphones, there's wireless handheld microphones, there are corded microphones. Um, and you know you don't want to cheap out on the, on the audio. Like we said, audio is the most important thing. So uh, sometimes if you're having an audio issue, simply upgrading the quality of the microphone can be enough to uh, solve that issue. Now, it's not going to be a magic bullet, but generally if you increase the quality of, a, of an audio uh, source, the microphone in the front of the chain uh, can actually solve a lot of problems. Now, audio interfaces could be either a giant audio mixer like we talked about earlier, or it could be just a USB interface that's taking multiple inputs and converting them to USB to be used in your audio mixer. Now, virtual audio cables, what are those? Virtual audio cables, generally used for Windows computers, but they allow you to maybe pump, it's literally, it's a virtual audio cable, an audio cable that goes from one application on your computer to another application on your computer. For example, maybe you're live streaming software to an audio recording application. Now, the next thing we'll talk about is live streaming hardware. So frame grabbers. I don't know if you guys are familiar with these. Let me grab one over here and I'll, I'll show one to you. Um, these are USB HDMI or SDI to USB capture devices. So here's one. This is a, this is a single channel one that has HDMI to USB. Here's one that has an HDMI loop through. So HDMI in, HDMI out with USB. So take any professional HDMI source, whether it's your pastor's laptop, it's a camcorder, it could be anything. It's a great device to have in your bag and make it available to your live streaming computer. Now, if you have a PCIe card, okay, that is something that can be put into a custom built computer. And I highly suggest looking into custom built computers because your church will save a ton of money. Not only will you save money on a bunch of frame grabbers, but you'll save money compared to what people are charging these days for, you know, real uh, $5,000 live streaming systems with a brand name on them. If you build a custom computer, you will save thousands. Video extenders, something that you'll probably come into if you want to extend video uh, over your network or over network cabling from your live streaming computer or a matrix device all the way out to a your confidence monitor, let's say. Now, this right here is an interesting product from PTZ Optics. This is a PCIe card in an enclosure box. So if you have a Mac computer, or if you have a computer with a Thunderbolt, uh, or sorry, I think it's Lightning Bolt, Lightning Bolt uh, connection, you can add four SDI or HDMI inputs into your computer just over a Lightning Bolt cable. So you don't have to build a custom PC if you don't want to. Now, live streaming hardware, uh, we have the three different types of cameras that are generally used. Uh, we have our document cameras, which might be showing the Bible, might be showing something small on a table. Um, static cameras, that's a PTZ Optic Z cam there, might be zoomed in just to the pastor to show him full screen. And then we have PTZ cameras. And PTZ cameras are great because you can have one or two cameras in a church that can be zoomed into multiple locations, remotely controlled, and you could have hundreds of different presets and angles inside the church to show your live viewers. Uh, continuing the live ha streaming hardware, there's camera control software, there's joysticks, and uh, the joysticks are great for volunteers. It gives them a job to do, somebody to track, and um, that is our overview of the basics 
of audiovisual technology. I showed the next chapter here. The next chapter is we're going to look at the Olivet Methodist Church. And uh, I'm going to show a case study video that we did on this church. It's going to give you a really good overview of a lot of the stuff we talked about implemented into a real church. And I'll take you inside and show you what it looks like. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I don't know if you know this, but we have a Facebook user group called Churches That Live Stream. And I really highly suggest you joining to learn more, collaborate with like-minded church media and pastors online. And then pick up the book. It's a great read. It's only $9.99. You can listen to it on Audible. And it's only $2.99 on Kindle. If you take my online course and you don't have the uh, funds to buy the book, I do include excerpts from the book, everything you'll need to learn and help your church live stream for free.